Imagine a dresser with antique-style brass pulls. Now imagine that same dresser with country-style wooden knobs or funky plastic knobs or sleek handles in stainless steel. The decorative hardware on a piece of furniture or on cabinetry dramatically affects its look. So changing it is an easy and inexpensive makeover. How would we get a grip on things without knobs and handles? But they're more than something that can open doors for you. The many styles add to the appeal of our furniture. To make a handle, an electrical hoist drops big chunks of zinc into a melting furnace. At 427 degrees Celsius, metal quickly turns into liquid. It's so hot you'd lose a finger if you touched it. Automated arms move an iron pot full of the liquid to a railroad car which takes it to the next stage. Here they pour the liquid metal into another furnace that's just as hot. This is called a machine furnace. A hydraulically driven cylinder pushes the liquid metal through a system of nozzles and pipes that run through the furnace. It carries the liquid metal to a die. The die shapes the handles cookie cutter style. Water flushes through the die. This cools down the zinc and it hardens into a handle shape with a lot of extra molding that they're going to have to get rid of. So now that they've cooled, it's safe to touch them and remove some of that waste. A worker snaps some of it off and tosses it in a bin for recycling later. And the handle shapes go into a separate bin. But there are still some little bits of waste on the handles called overflows. So a mechanically driven spinner tosses the handles around and knocks off any overflows that have been missed. It's a lot faster than picking off those little pieces by hand. A worker dumps the handle shapes into a bin. They're starting to look like something you could really hang on to. A similar die casting system is used to make knobs. But the knobs come in two interlocking pieces. They place them on a turntable and fit them together. Then a four-ton hydraulic press presses down on the knob and that pressure seals them. They pour a mixture of water and oil on the knobs to cool and lubricate them, while an automated machine drives a screw into the back of the knob. This makes a thread pattern inside of it so it can be easily screwed onto furniture later. Now they plunge the handles into a chemical bath. The chemicals help to conduct electricity. This process is called electroplating. The handles are negatively charged. The brass particles in the water are positively charged. They attract and connect, and this causes the brass plating to form. They dip the handles into the chemical wash twice, and then rinse twice. Next, they dump the brass handles into a vat of acid. This oxidizes it, blackening the finish to make it look antiqued. This brass pool has aged a hundred years in just a few minutes. Next, they funnel the handles into a big round polisher. It's called a bowl vibrator. The handles are mixed in with steel ball bearings. The machine vibrates and the friction from the ball bearings polishes the handles. Now those antiqued brass handles have a shinier finish. Sometimes they use ceramic pellets in the polisher instead of ball bearings. They spray soap and water into the bowl to lubricate the handles and allow them to move freely. This gentler friction results in a different finish. The polish on the handles will be brighter. Now they put a handle into a clamp. With air pressure, it puts the squeeze on the handle so that it hooks into a back plate. When the pressure is released, the fit is snug. A front and back plate gives a handle a more elaborate look. They buff up a knob with a cloth polishing wheel that's mechanically driven. This process gives knobs and handles a certain gleam. It's the finishing touch. So now you have a handle on how furniture hardware is made.